First check out our video on the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium before learning about the Hardy-Weinberg equation. If you have already, recall that Hardy and Weinberg um, agreed that across populations, um, evolution may only occur given certain conditions. If these conditions are met, a population can, can be said to be in genetic equilibrium. To get a better understanding of this, we can demonstrate the principles mathematically. All you need to know to begin is um, a few variables, p, q, p squared, q squared, and 2 p, q. p, the small p variable, represents the frequency, I'll just put frequency up here because we're going to repeat that, the frequency of the dominant allele. Little q is the frequency of the recessive allele. Okay, um, so the p squared, as you can see down here, two little p's, is a homozygous dominant individual. q squared, you might have guessed it, is a homozygous recessive individual. And if you need to review these concepts, definitely go back to our chapters, um, our videos on genetics. And 2PQ, or a dominant and recessive uh, combination, refers to a heterozygous individual. Okay, so these are important to remember before we begin. Um, so what we need to um, also know is that in a population, the total frequency of dominant and recessive alleles, since there are only two, must be equal to 100%. Therefore, this equation, p plus q equals 1, makes sense. They total up to equal the total amount of alleles that are possible in a population. Mathematically, if that's true, then also this second equation here is true. We know this by putting uh, these possible gene frequencies into this famous Punnett square. Um, you can notice that 2p's p squared right here is what you end up with. q squared, if we mix up these genes, and two sets of these heterozygous individuals, or 2pq. Okay, so let's try um, a typical problem that you might um, see related to the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Let's say that the frequency um, in squirrels for being homozygous dominant for gray fur color, okay, so let's note that gray is dominant. We'll represent that with a big, perhaps a big G. So we know big G, big G, homozygous dominant. The frequency in the population is 81% percent. The question here would be, what percentage of the population is gray? Okay, I said gray is dominant, and these are all the homozygous dominant individuals. But what about the heterozygous individuals? How do we total that up? So let's use the equation to get us started. Um, and assume a simple case of a simple case of inheritance patterns, not not incomplete dominance or anything like that. So we wrote down what we know. Gray fur color is dominant and the frequency is 81%. What do we see over here as representing the dominant gene? That's little p right here. So little p, or p squared in this case, is equal to 0.81. We just converted the percent into a number, into a decimal. Okay, um, if p squared is equals 0.81, it's pretty easy to solve for p. p equals 0.9. So take the square root of both sides to get 0.9. Can we determine uh, what the variable q would be given this equation up here? Absolutely. We know p, so we can solve for q. q, if p plus q equals 1, q must equal 0.1. Okay. Um, but we're not finished yet. We know P, we know Q. Um, but all we have is the frequency for homozygous dominant alleles. Since having gray fur 
is dominant. It can also be heterozygous, represented by big G, little g. So we already know that the frequency for homozygous dominant is 0 0.81. What's the, what's the frequency for heterozygous individuals? Can we find that out? Yes. So p squared, I'm going to put again, is 0.81. We know if a heterozygous individual is 2pq, or 2 times p times q. Do we have those variables? Yes. So a heterozygous individual is going to be 2 times 0.9 times 0.1, or equal to 0.18. So this is 2pq is equal to 0.18. So how do we figure out the the um, total allele frequency for gray, uh, for not just the big G, big G, but also for the big G, little g combined, we add them. So total up 0.81 plus 0.18, and your answer is 0.99. Or what's that in percent? 99% of the population is uh, has gray fur color. There's your answer. Other problems um, are a little bit more simple. They would give you a value for P or for Q. And once you know these, you, all you have to do is solve using one or both of these formulas.